the, uh, I'm, I'm excited that we're going to be bringing our young adults for you to experience ministry from our young adults next Sunday. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and get the series started. And it's entitled The Hard Truth About Love and Giving. The Hard Truth. Say that with me. The Hard Truth About Love and Giving. And uh, today we're just going to talk about love gives. Can you say that with me? Love gives. One more time. Say that love gives. Yeah, that's what love uh, does. And so uh, we're going to be reading out of John chapter 3, verse 14 through 16. And then you, I'll let you be seated. But it is our custom uh, to honor God and the reading of his word uh, by standing to our feet. And so... If you'll do that for us, we would certainly appreciate that. The Gospel according to St. John, chapter 3, verse 14 through 16. And I'm going to be reading out of the Passion Translation. We missed you all last Sunday. My spiritual son, Pastor Tyler Lee, was here ministering. And I hope you enjoyed the ministry of Pastor Tyler as he was teaching on faith. And we were in Arkansas celebrating with our Northwest Arkansas campus 22 years. I know we don't look that old, right? But we, we pioneered that campus 22 years ago, and they celebrated 22 years there, and uh, uh, God just did some awesome things there last, last weekend, so, but we certainly missed our Charlotte family. Um, so let's jump into this word, John chapter 3, verse 14 through 16, the Passion Translation. If you don't have it, you can certainly look up on the screen with us. If you're watching uh, virtually, uh, hopefully it's on your screen there and you can see it. And it reads, just as Moses in the desert lifted up the brass replica of a snake on a pole for all the people to see and be healed, so the Son of Man is ready to be lifted up. That means he's ready to be given. That means he's ready to lay down his life. So is the Son of Man ready to be lifted up. Verse 15, so that. Everybody say, so that. So that those who truly believe in him will not perish, but be given eternal life. Verse 16, for this is how much God loved the world. Now don't miss that. Don't miss that. This is how much, say that. This is how much God loved the world. This is how much God loved the world. How much did he love the world? He loved the world. Now we go right into for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But it already told us how much God loved, loved the world, that the, son of, that the son of man was ready for his life to be lifted up. He was ready for his life to be lifted up. I mean, there was a willing gift that was given to us. Don't you hate for people to give you something, but they don't do it with a willing heart? <laughs> you might as well keep that gift. I don't want it. But Jesus willingly gave. Say it. He willingly gave. And so the, the King James Version says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The Passion Translation translate that as saying, For this is how much God loved the world. He gave. Somebody say, He gave. gave. Say, love gives. love gives. It says, He gave his one and only unique son as a gift. So now, everyone who believes in him will never perish, but experiencing but experience, rather, everlasting life. God, may you be pleased with the words that come out of my mouth that have originated from my heart. You place those words there, and I pray that you would take those words to its furthest end and cause them to accomplish what your intent and purposes were in placing them in my heart. And I declare by faith that your word will not return back unto you void. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Say love gives. Again, one more time. Love gives. Now, my intent today is that we're going to deal with the hard truth about love and giving. And by dealing with this truth, my prayer is that generosity would be unlocked in your heart. It will be unlocked in your hearts. For you to truly be able to love like God loves. Do you know that that is one of the 
uh, most precise ways to embody who God is to someone else is by giving through love. It's our giving through love that causes people to see and experience the love of God through us. Somebody say, God help me love like that. Oftentimes in many instances in, in your life, if you're not careful, you know, we sometimes we have a tendency to put the cart before the horse, right? And this has to do a lot with our understanding or, if you will, our lack thereof. All around the world, the month of November, especially this particular week, is what we call Turkey Week, right? Turkey Day. Uh, turkey Day is coming up this upcoming Thursday. And I don't know about nobody else. I love Turkey Day. <laughs> y'all going to leave me hanging. Y'all like Turkey Day too. Maybe y'all like turkey. Maybe y'all like the ham. Maybe y'all like the greens if y'all not meat eaters, all right? Uh, and sweet potato pie and all that other good stuff. That, that supposedly represents Thanksgiving. But if that is to the proportion and to the degree that you understand what it means to give thanks, we are falling desperately short of what Thanksgiving really is all about. And so we have a tendency to get so caught up in Thanksgiving. This is what I call putting, putting the cart before the horse. We, we get so caught up in Thanksgiving instead of asking ourselves, why am I so thankful? Why am I so grateful? You see, the why is always more important than the what. Or let me say it this way, the why is just as important as the what. You can't get so focused on the what because it's not powerful to do something when you don't know why you're doing it. So it's one thing to say, I'm thankful, and to pray that prayer on Thursday. Lord, we thank you for the turkey. Lord, we thank you for this. Lord, we thank you for this. But, but, but why are we thankful? It's not just about that turkey. It's not just about being able to put food on the table. It's the why behind it. And so we're going we're gonna to talk about that why. We're going to lean into that a little bit today, if you'll allow me. So I want to submit to you that in order to give thanks, we must first understand the reason behind thanksgiving. You can't give thanks until you understand the reason behind why you're giving thanks, or else you're just giving thanks. You don't even know what you're doing. You don't know why you're doing it. So what is the reason behind thanksgiving? Why do we give thanks? We give thanks, I submit to you, because someone else has already given love. Come on, let that sink deep. We give thanks because somebody else has already given us love. Somebody has already released an act of love, an act of kindness. That's why we give thanks. Somebody did something for us, and maybe we didn't even ask them to do it, but we look around and we see that it's been done. That, that causes our hearts to be thankful, right? I don't know about you, but that causes my heart to be thankful. Especially if you, if you come in my office and I got stuff everywhere and I don't feel like cleaning my own office up, and I just, I just show up and all of a sudden my office is clean. I'm going to become thankful. I'm going to become thankful. It's a selfish heart that doesn't become thankful when someone does something for them, especially if you didn't ask them to do it. Are you with me? And so it's because of the act of someone giving love. It was someone's act of kindness. It was someone's selflessness and generosity that ignited, watch this, a response. It ignited gratitude in your heart. A gratitude that says, I'm thankful for what was done for me. And, and that response, you all, is what we do every year around about this time. We are just responding to what has already been done for us. Somebody say, Thanksgiving is a response. It's a response. 1 John chapter 4, verse 19 says this. It says, we love him because he first loved us. If someone, listen. We loved him because he first loved us. If someone had not loved you first, you would not have a cause to be thankful. We are thankful because, watch this, see, it's a cause and effect. The cause is somebody did something for us. The effect is there's a response of gratitude. The cause is, is somebody did a, act, a selfless act 
of generosity on your behalf. The cause or the effect is, is that my heart is filled with thanksgiving. Somebody said that's cause and effect. It's cause and effect. And so the Bible says that we love him or we release a response of love back to God. Why? I say back to God because he what? Help me preach it first. Loved because he first loved us. That means he first did something to us. He first gave us something. That's why we respond in love. It is love given away that makes the case for your hearts to abound with thanksgiving. Today, the word of God makes the case that love is not love until it's given away. I want you to say that. Love is not love until it's what? Until it's what? Until it's given away. For God so loved, the scripture says, for God so loved, he so gave away his love. For God so what? Help me preach it. He so what? He so what? He so what? And when he loved, he did what? He, he gave. He gave. God so loved. So every time you see for God so loved, I want you to see for God so gave us such extraordinary gift. That men would not perish but have everlasting life. And the reason that we don't perish and have and that we can have everlasting life is because God so because God so loved. Now I know that sounds elementary to a lot of us. It almost sounds like the uh, nursery rhyme, right? Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me for this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. We are weak, but he is strong. Yes. Jesus loves me. It seems so simple, but it's so profound. Because if Jesus had not loved us, we would be in trouble. If Jesus had not released love to us, and, and, and it's not about having love for someone, it's about you releasing that love that you have for them, you release it toward them. You can have love for me, but I'll never feel it if you don't release it. You got to release it. You got to say love is to be given away. Love is to be given away. So the tension that the scripture today is creating is that you cannot love without giving. That's the hard truth. The hard truth that everyone in this room and everybody who's watching me via live stream, I hope that you leave your understanding and you can grasp this truth, however hard it might be, is you cannot love without giving. Say that with me. I cannot love, I cannot love. without giving. Without giving. I didn't say it was hard to love without giving. I said you cannot love without giving. Love gives. Now, let me reverse it. You can give without loving. You can give without, it is possible to give without loving. How's that? Because you can give with ulterior motives. You can give with selfish motives. Had anybody ever experienced that? I'm, I'm not asking you to give the person away. I'm just saying, have you ever experienced that before? Yeah. Yeah, somebody doing something for you, but you know that they have an ulterior motive, Lewis. You know that they really want something from you before they even do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're just doing it because you want something. I'm not talking about the act of needing something from someone and you do something because of that. Listen, listen, that doesn't reach the heart. The love that reaches the heart is to, to love without needing anything back. Yeah. It's to love without the need to receive anything back from the recipient that you're giving it to. It's, I'm just doing it, watch this, because. I'm just doing it because I love you. Why are you doing it? Because. I remember in, in Northwest Arkansas, every time around Easter, we used to do what we call love revolution. Love Revolution, where we, we would just start a love revolution throughout Northwest Arkansas with acts of kindness. We would, we would give away $25, $5, $10, $15 gas cards. We would stand at the gas pump. People, they would drive up to the gas pump, and we, with our restoration T-shirts on, we would, we would ask people if we could pump their gas. And they, would, and they would look at us. And you know why they would look at us so strange, Miss Deborah? It's because they thought we had ulterior motives. Lisa, they thought that, there were, that we had something up our sleeve that we was trying to get something from. We weren't trying to get anything from them. We would simply want to give something away. 
And they couldn't understand that it is more blessed. Y'all help me preach this. To give than to than to receive. You all, if once you get the power of love, once you get the true definition of love, you will understand it is way more blessed to give than it is to receive. They didn't understand that we were getting more of a blessing by pumping their gas, giving them some free money that they didn't do anything to earn. This was a small, insignificant seeming way to show them and to express to them the power of the love of God. That God loved you and you didn't do anything to earn it. Just like I'm pumping this gas for you and you didn't do anything to earn it. You didn't earn this $25 card. You didn't earn this $15 card. But I'm going to do it anyway. Love anyway. Say love anyway. And so, without having giving, be prompted in your heart. So what is love? Let's dig into this deeper for comprehension. If my spiritual father, if he was ministering today, he says, for purportment. <laughs> I used to always wonder, what in the world is that? He said, for purportment. Purportment is comprehension, understanding. He says, so for, so for purportment, <laughs> let's... Let's dig a little deeper. Toya, she's going to get a kick out of that because she says I always come up with these big words. So for purportment, let's dig a little bit deeper so we can get some comprehension here. Let's define love. Love is not a thing. I'm having you to do a lot of repeating because I need you to get this. Teachers in school, they have their students to repeat, not because they like hearing the students say something out, out after them because they understand the power of saying something that you're learning back to yourself. So you're not saying it to me, you're really repeating it back to yourself. So say this with me. Love is not a thing. Love is, not a thing. Love is a person. Love is a person. If you, that's the first thing I need you to get about love. Love is not a thing. Love is a person. Love is not a noun. Love is a pronoun. Stop looking at love as a thing. Love, love, love is not a thing. Love is not just e an emotion. I know that that's what Tina Turner said, right? She said love is just an emotion. No, love is greater than an emotion. Love is, greater, lo love, love is greater than an emotion. Love is who created emotions. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Say, say God. God. Come on, I'm giving you an open book test. God wow. is Love. Come on, one more time. God is love. You don't have no reason for flunking this test. One more time. God is love. Who is love? God. Notice I didn't say what. I said who is love? God. God is love. God is love. God, the creator of the universe, he's love. God is bigger than an emotion. God is bigger than a feeling. Just because you feel, listen, listen you don't have to feel nothing for God to exist. Even if you don't feel anything when you come to church, that does not nullify and negate the existence of God. I'm preaching real good. I'm preaching real good. Say, God is love. Say it again. God is love. God is love. God is not a thing. God, love is a person. Love is not a thing. Love is a person. First John chapter 4, verse 7 through 19. I want to read this to you. And I don't want to just skim over it, but I really want to dig into this a little bit because I need you to get comprehension here. First John chapter four, verse seven through 19. And I'm, we're going to read this out of the Passion Translation. So if you don't have the Passion Translation uh, that you're looking at, you can look on, on the screen there. Verse seven says, those who are loved by God, let his love continually. First of all, whose love is it? Whose love is it? It's God's love. You don't have love, any love in and of yourself. You don't have any love to give anybody. You didn't create love, and so you don't have any love to give away. Only love we have to give away is what God gives us. Okay? As a matter of fact, our love to each other is only, I've already told you this, is only a what? Response to his love to us. So it says, those who are loved by God, let his love continually pour from you to one another because, there it is, 
God is love. Everyone who loves is fathered by God. Everyone who loves is fathered by God. That means you're one of God's children. That means you are a son of God. Say, I'm a son of God. If you are a son of God, if you open up your mouth and you declare, I am a son of God, listen, you are loved by God and you have love to share with others. Say, I got love to give away. The one who doesn't love, verse 8, has yet to know God. For God is, there it is, love. The light of God's love shined within us when he sent his matchless son into the world so that we might live through him. This is love. Come on. It's giving us our definition right here. It says this is love. I want, I want, to, go back and read, I want to go back and read chapter, uh, verse 9 again. The light of God's love shined within us when he sent his matchless son. When he sent, he sent. That means he gave. He gave. Somebody say, God gave. God gave. And love does what? Gives. What did God do? He gave. Love does what? Gives. And so God, he, when he gave or he sent his matchless son into the world so that we might live through him, who is Jesus, this is love. He loved us long before we loved him. It was his love. Boy, the Bible preaches all for itself, doesn't it? Not ours. Say it's God's love. He, God, proved it by sending his son to be the pleasing sacrificial offering to take away our sins. Your response of love is always proof of love. Say my response is my proof I got it. See, when you respond in love, it's proof that you have love. Yeah. Oh, that's good preaching. When you respond in love, that means when you give away of something of yourself. When you, when you give of yourself, it's proof. You don't have to say, I love God. You don't have to tell me. I don't, as a matter of fact, I don't want you to tell me that you love God. Show me. Show me. It's like... You can only tell your wife so long or your husband so long that you love them and you never show them. After a while, somebody's going to be saying, all right, now, I done had enough lip service. I want some action. And God's not just about lip service. God is about action. Faith without works being, is dead being alone. Right? So faith got to have some works. So we say we love God. We ought to have some proof that we love God. And your response is, is your proof. You don't have to argue, argue with somebody that you love God. You don't have to defend yourself that you love God. Just prove it. Prove it with your response. Somebody say, I'm proving it, I'm proving it, I'm proving it. <laughs> Glory to God. Watch this. He proved it by what? Sending his son to be the pleasing sacrificial offering to take away our sins. Delightfully loved ones, if he loved us with such tremendous love, this is talking about God, then loving one another should be our way of life. It's talking about attitude. It's talking about mindset. Whenever you see way of life, it's talking about attitude. It's talking about mindset. It's, it's a way. It's a mindset. It's an attitude. Okay? God, God's trying to create this attitude in us concerning love. Hallelujah. What's the attitude? When I think about love, I should think about giving. I'm not just talking about giving of your money either. But your money will lead me to what you love. Yes, sir. They missed that, Lewis. I said, I'm not just talking about money, but your money will lead me to what you love. Okay, I'll let the Bible say it. It says, um, where a man's treasure is, that's where his heart is. So, I just said it a different way. Your money will lead me to what and who you love. Just show me your checkbook. Well, we don't keep checkbook registers no more, do we? But just show me your checkbook register. You just look at somebody's register. What they spend their money on, it's going to show me what you value. It's going to show me where you place your value. If 
Follow the trend. Somebody say, follow the money. Follow the money. Follow the money. But I'm, but I'm not just talking about money. I'm not just talking about money. Verse 12, no one has ever gazed upon the fullness of God's splendor, but if we love one another, if we love one another, and that is a big if, if we love one another, God makes his permanent home in us, and we make our permanent home in him. Uh, another translation says that if we abide in him, and he abide in us. Abide means to, uh, is to dwell with consistently, consistently, without breaking fellowship. Abide, 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 abide. I go to Walmart, I'm still abiding. Come on, let me help you. I don't just abide when I'm at church. I go to Nordstrom's, I'm still abiding. I go to um, Hickory Tavern. What other restaurants we got out there? Village Tavern, Red Lobster, I'm still abiding. See, we don't, we, Lewis got me laughing. We don't, we don't leave Jesus at home because you're not abiding. Abiding means to consistently dwell. He's always there, glory. And it says, and if you abide in him and if he abides in you, or if you make your permanent home in him and he makes his permanent home in you, watch this, and his love is brought to its full expression in us. And he has given us his spirit, verse 13, within us so that we can have the assurance that he lives in us and that we live in him. Moreover, we have seen with our eyes and can testify to the truth that the Father God has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Those who give thanks that Jesus is the Son of God, living God, and God lives in them. Verse 16, we have come into an intimate experience with God's love, and we trust in the love he has for us. God is what? Love. Those who are living in love are living in God, and God lives through them. By living in God, love has been brought to its full expression. How is love brought to its full expression? By living in God, by us dwelling in God. By us, by us staying in fellowship, by us staying in proper alignment with God. It's not about how many scriptures you know. It's about, it's, it's a matter of the heart. Somebody say it's a matter of the heart. You see, the Bible says man looks on the outer appearance, but God does what? He looks at the, God looks at the heart. God looks at the heart. He's always looking at our heart. God doesn't look at your wallet. God looks at your heart. See, some people are so religious, they think they can give their way into heaven. You will never be able to give your way into heaven. God is not looking at your pocketbook. He's looking at your heart because men look at what you give outwardly, but God looks at your heart. Why is the heart so important? It's because the attitude of the heart will always outflow into actions. That's why God looks at the heart. Because whatever's in my heart is going to overflow through my actions or vice versa. Whatever is not in my heart is not going to come forth in my actions. And by not doing it's still in action. <laughs> you see. Watch this. Love never brings fear. Now I think that 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 bears mentioning again. Love never brings fear, for fear is always related to punishment. But love's perfection drives the fear of punishment far from our hearts. Whoever walks constantly afraid of punishment has not reached love's perfection. Our love for others is, there it is. I've been saying it, but there it is in black and white. Our love for others is our grateful response to the love of God. Somebody say, thank you for your word. That's, that's all I'm preaching, you all. I'm not preaching my own ideas. You hadn't heard one word come out of my mouth that's opinion. It's the word of God. And I just think that we are living in such a day and a time, we don't have time for people's opinion. We have to base our values on the truth. 
on something that is solid, that's strong enough for us and our families to stand on, that won't act as sinking quicksand to us. And opinions are quicksand. You sink fast on opinions. But if you base your life on the truth of the word of God, hallelujah, it will, it will act, the Bible says, as an anchor for our souls. Say it'll hold me in place. All right. Number two. So number one was what? Love is not a thing. Love is a? Talking about definition of love. And that's all I'm going to do is deal with the definition of love today. Love is not a thing. Love is a? Number two. Love is an action. What is love? What is love? Love is an action. Love always incites action. Love activates. Love actuates to be actuated. Love actuates you. Love motivates you. Love inspires you. Love prompts you to do something. You see, if, if you truly have the love of God in your heart, you cannot stand by and not do nothing. I don't want to step on some feet. You, you, if, if, if you truly have the love of God in your heart, if, if you see something, uh, some form of injustice going on, let's just say race, racism, because that's the big R word today, right? Racism. Everybody's marching over ra racism. Well, listen, if you stand by idly or if you sit by idly and you see some form of injustice going on and you don't do nothing or say nothing about it, how can you have the love of God in your heart? And I'm not talking about violence and all, all, all of this foolishness that, that also comes along with the territory. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm just talking about standing against what God stands against. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. If you see somebody mis being uh, harshly misspoken about and they're not there to defend themselves... And you just sit there and continue to be a part of that conversation and you don't speak up for that person That's right. or you don't you don't say, well, you know what? I'd much rather not be a part of this conversation because this is not going anywhere good. Amen. If you don't at least speak up. Yes, sir. Where is the love of God? Somebody say, where is the love? Come on, y'all. I'm, I'm trying to bring us to some reality. I don't want some pie in the sky word this morning. I want us to face the reality of is that we, if we say we love God, love is an action. Yes, sir. Love is an action. Love cannot always be comprehended just through words. More times than not, love has to be displayed. And the display is our response to God's love. What is the display? Again, one more time. What is the display? Giving is always the response to God's love. That's the hard truth that we got to deal with. Because people think when we, when we, when we dare talk about giving in church, ooh, we've, we've done something diabolical. I dare you. I dare you. I dare you. Well, isn't, isn't the reason that we're here is to talk about the love of Christ? How can we talk about the love of Christ without talking about giving? Come on, people, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help us. You cannot talk about the love of Christ and what he did for you on Calvary without talking about giving. And our response, one of the vehicles that God has placed in the earth for us to respond to his love is our money. Amen. It is. That's one of the vehicles. Say money is a vehicle. Money is not the end all. It is a vehicle. I've been in this thing for well over 22 years. I, I, don't, get, I don't get overwhelmed by people's faces when I use the word M-O-N-E-Y. Because God hadn't cursed money. It's the love of money. Okay. All right. Almost done. Love is a choice. Number one, I said love is not a thing. Love is a. Number two, I said love is a. And number three, love is a choice. Say love is a choice. 
First Corinthians chapter 13, verse, verse 5. I believe my wife just got through talking about this, how, uh, how we treat our daughters, especially our adult daughters. Uh, as, as, as they grow older, we want them to have choices. We won't tell them everything they got to do. Where no longer is no more about, you better do this. It's, it's no, I would much rather have them say, I want to do it, Daddy. That's, that's the heart of love. Love don't stand over somebody with a gun and say, you better love me. That's not love. Say love is a choice. First Corinthians 13, 5, the New Living Translation says, love does not demand its own way. If you're demanding your way, you're not giving me a choice. If you're telling me this is the highway, this, this is how it is, and... It's my way, or you better travel down another path. That's not what love does. Love provides a choice. Isn't that what God did for us? Yeah. I said, is that not what God did for us? Yeah. God, he says, here's my love. Now it's up to you to take it. If I had $100 in my pocket, I bet we'd have, y'all Y'all wouldn't be social distancing no more. Uh, Especially if I held it out and said, the first person that comes to get it, you can have it. <laughs> Ain't no more social distancing. No more social distancing. <laughs> maybe not for $100. Maybe if I had, had $1,000, maybe that would kind of motivate a few more of you all. <laughs> but God put it out there, and God said, here it is. This is valuable. This is valuable. This is precious to me, and I want to give it to you. God don't say, you better take it because it's the most important thing to me. I'm giving my son for you. You better act right. No, God, God, God never said that. God never said, oh, God. Y'all, that messes me up right there. Because <laughs> I remember the wretch I used to be. I remember walking down that big long aisle there in my student student union uh, when the power team gave that altar call. And, and I remember I didn't come in until the altar call. God, God, and he was so kind and so generous in his ways, Miss Deborah, that he waited on me to get in the building before they made the altar call. And I, I lied to you not, I walked right in the building and it was like a magnet. I walked right down that altar and didn't even know why I was walking down, really. But I knew I needed a change in my life. I needed a change. I wanted a change in my life. And I wanted to try something better than all that other foolishness that I was participating in. I was making a choice. He put it out there. He says, the choice is yours. You choose this day. Life, death. You choose. My God. That's what love says. Love says, boom, boom, you choose. That's what love says. Love says, you choose. My God. Love says, you choose. Love says, you choose. Love is a choice. Say, love is a choice. It's a choice. Love is a, love is a choice, meaning it's a matter of the heart. Meaning God did not give his love to you with the condition that you love him back. God loves you if you never choose to give your love to him in return. He still, somebody say, he still loves me. Something about that phrase that just messes me up. He still, still. Something about that word still. Still. Still means in spite of. In spite of me, he loves me. In spite of my mess, he loves me. In spite of my foolishness, he loves me. In spite of me being a knucklehead, he loves me. In spite of me having a bra an abrasive personality, he still loves me. And whatever else other things that the devil can put in our heads about ourselves, and God says, that's all right, I still love you. Oh, God, y'all missed it. We beat, ourselves, we beat ourselves up so much, and what we really need to start doing is focusing on how much he loves me. We need to go back to being little, little children again. No wonder the Bible says that you cannot enter to the kingdom of God unless you come as one of these little ones. 
And we need to go back to singing, yes, Jesus, forgive me for getting excited. He loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. This I know. Why? Because the Bible tells me so. Somebody says a choice. So giving is an attitude. It starts in the heart. I got two more for you and then I'm done. Love is a sacrifice. Say love is a sacrifice. Love is a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. Oh, I got I to gotta, I gotta give you this before I get to sacrifice. Giving that originates from your flesh and not your heart is based on lust and not love. Giving that originates from your flesh, that means it originates outside of your heart. You know, you're just doing it for some ulterior motive. It has to do with lust and not love. Lust is selfish and self-seeking. And of course, the scripture that I shared with you earlier, this is why the word of God declares in Matthew 6, 21, wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. Love is a what? It's a sacrifice. Love always seeks the well-being of another. Love is not about me, 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 me. Love does not say don't take care of you, but it's not just about you. And what God did is God put us before himself. He let his love to do something for us override the fact that he was giving us his best. I dare you to get a, uh, well... I won't, I won't use that example. Uh, y'all may not be able to. Um, but let's just say this. Your most precious thing around your house. I was going to say shoes because I'm a, I'm a shoe fanatic. I love shoes. But your most precious thing around your house. I don't know. Maybe it's a motorcycle. Men. Maybe it's a, a car. You know, when I was a little boy, men, they used to work on their cars more than they worked on their on their bodies. Uh, you better not hit a man's car when I was a little boy. That's a fight. You better, not, you, you better not scratch his car. Whatever that most precious is to you, would you be willing to sacrifice it for someone else? God's had me give away custom-made suits in my closet. He said, give it away. And it never fails. It's as quick as I give it away. Somebody's blessing me with something. Say love is a sacrifice. God never asks you to sacrifice more than he's willing to sacrifice for you. Stand to your feet. Ooh, that got me right there. I said that got me right there. That got me right there. God never asks you to sacrifice more than what he is willing to sacrifice for you. I remember uh, Miss Deborah, uh, our campus in Arkansas, we're experiencing some lean times back in the early days. My wife and I, we were experiencing some lean times. I'm talking about financially. We were at a meeting. We we were at a meeting where a gentleman was teaching on giving. He, he, He was teaching on the blessing of giving. I know about giving. You know, I I'm I'm not a novice to that. I'm a man of faith. You know, I I I understand the power of giving. But you know, when you're challenged with something. And then God challenges you. Is that, That's where the rubber meets the road, right? And we were needing something extraordinary to happen for us financially. I don't know if you remember, it was, it was Sadiq, Dr. Sadiqi's meeting that we were at at Bishop Benford's church. And the Lord spoke to me, and I, I don't... I don't uh, I don't try to make this everybody's 
testimony where you hear what I did, what I was challenged to do, and you try to go do the same because you got to have the grace to do it. You got to have the grace to do it. And the Lord spoke to me and he says, I want you to give it all. He said, I want you to give it all. I want you to give it all. And so what I did, I, I went in our checking account and I gave it all. Everything. Everything we had. My wife would tell you, and he did it. <laughs> and, I, and, and I wouldn't. But I gave it all. The church's bank account. That next week, we had over $100,000 to come in in a sacrificial offering that was given in the church. And whatever the Howards missed by me giving that, by God instructed me to do it. We got it back plus more. God will never ask you to sacrifice more. That's my point than what he's willing to sacrifice back to you. In other words, let's go back to the old church. We used to sing a song. You can't beat God giving, no matter how hard you try. Have you been blessed by this word? Have you been blessed by this word? So much more I have to give you, but I'll give it to you in a few weeks uh, when, we, when we take back up again. I do want to read this to you. I just want to read it. You were born again into a kingdom of love and love gives. As sons of God, your identity is reflected in what you give, not in what you get. Where's my identity? It's in what I give, it's not in what I get. Jesus had a firm understanding of his identity as the son of God, and his identity was rooted in love, because his father is love. In scripture, 1 John 4, 7 states, everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. The writer makes it clear that the greatest resemblance God's children have to him is that they love. What is my greatest resemblance to God that I love? Love gives. You can't love without giving. To love is to give. The Bible says in John 3, 16 that God so loved the world that he gave. The bottom line of your identity as a son of God is this, by what you give and not by what you get. Do not find your identity in futile and fading things, but in God's love. The hands of love position its palms downward to give and not up to receive. In the words of Jesus Christ, it is more blessed to give than to receive. The truth is giving, not getting, is the way to a richer life in God, a more satisfying life. As you grow deeper in your identity in Christ Jesus, as a son of God, you will be empowered to rise above the self-centered nature of this age and release the love of God to others through giving and you will be happier as a result that's just from my personal devotion I wrote that down in my personal devotional years ago I was up one morning just praying and meditating and I and I just began to write as, as the Holy Spirit was sharing that with me and I hope that blessed you as I shared it with you come on lift your hands and say I'm God's child I most resemble him through my love, which is my response to his 